Welcome back to the Atwood Machine channel. Just kidding. Um, so I think this might be one of my last Atwood Machine videos. Uh, so I'm looking at, in this video, I'm trying to solve the problem of an Atwood Machine with two masses, a heavy pulley, and a heavy rope. Okay, let me just review where we've been. I made a little chart here. And I'm really, I'm, I'm gonna end because I'm running out of room right here. So here's your plain Atwood machine. It has uh, two masses hanging over a pulley, but there's, the string has no mass and the pulley has no mass. So it's perfect, right? It's, it's, that's just a normal traditional Atwood machine. Here's a half Atwood machine. In this case, one mass is hanging over a table and the other mass is on a frictionless table. Here is an inclined half Atwood. It's the same thing except it's not a flat table. And then I did, after that, I did uh, Atwood machine, but I wanted to find the final velocity, and it didn't, it's not a new problem, it's just finding something new. Then I did a half Atwood machine with friction between these two things, and then I did an inclined half Atwood with friction right there, and then I did uh, an Atwood machine with a heavy disc for the, for the pulley, and then I did uh, Atwood machine with a heavy rope, but a massless disc. And this has a massless rope. Now I'm going to combine these two together today. And I don't know how it's going to go. Because this gets a little complicated. Um, and there is something else I could do, but there's a lot of other problems I could do. Maybe I'll do a video on the other kind of problems you could do, but not solve them. Okay, so I'm going to use the result from this problem. So this problem uh, I did it actually twice. I did this with work energy and then I did it with uh, with forces and torque to find the acceleration of these things. Um, but it had a massless rope. So I think I'm going to use that idea uh, and, and find the new acceleration. Well, at least an equation of motion. Um, so let's start and talk about uh, if I have a unstretchable rope, then A1 equals magnitude equals a2 magnitude equals uh, alpha r technically that's a vector magnitude so what this says is that if this one moves down a centimeter in a certain amount of time that one has to move up the same distance in the same amount of time and this also has to rotate to correspond so there's no slipping or stretching and so all those things are true the other thing that that we've I've used before is to say the tension over here is the same as right there, and that's no longer true, because uh, this rope, uh, since it's pulling on the well, since it's pulling on itself uh, and it's hanging, if you just have a, a hanging heavy rope, then the tension along that rope is not going to be constant. And also, there's a frictional force between the disc and the rope, and that actually means that this can be pulling more on one side than on the other, and that's what causes the disc to rotate. So that's the only thing that we have true. But let's suppose I simplify, okay, so one other thing. Uh, I'm gonna say the total uh, length of the rope is L, and I, I pick some values here, not that they really matter that much, but I pick some values. The total length is L, and it has a mass of 50 grams. So we can think about the linear mass density. I have it down here, can you see that? The linear mass density is the mass of the rope divided by the length. It's the mass per unit length, and I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use that and make an approximation. So here's my disc, heavy disc. And then I'm gonna say this is M1 prime, and this is M2 prime. So in this case, I, what I want to do is assume a massless rope. If I, because I, this is what I have in this situation, m1 prime is this, not on the top. It's all of this, and m2 prime is all of that. So if I treat that, and I, I guess I'm going to have to make the assumption. Ooh boy, didn't think about that. Okay. Well, I'll still have to, and then I'll have this part of the rope. I just thought of that idea. That'll be part of the disc that accelerates. So that'll be, I'll add that to the moment of inertia of the disc. That will work. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Then I can treat this problem just like I did before. And I can find the acceleration based on how much of the rope is hanging over here and how much is hanging over there. And that's that M1 prime is all of that mass and M2 prime, so let's call, let's put some variables in here. Uh, I think I did this, 
Yeah, I called this, and this is kind of a cheat, but this is y equals zero. So I'll call this variable going downwards y. So m1 prime is going to be m1 plus this extra uh, mass right there, which is going to be uh, the length of the rope, which is y, times lambda. That's that. m2 prime is going to be m2 plus this length of the rope. So what's that length of rope? That's going to be equal to L minus y minus 2r. No, wait, minus pi r. Yeah, this distance of, of is pi r lambda. So now if I have m2 prime, now if I have those two masses and use their primes, I can just substitute in over here. But wait, this m3 prime, I'm going to have to use m3 prime. I have to use m3 prime. And that is going to be um, the moment of inertia. So it's really this is deals. This is from i equals one half m3 r squared, and that's why there's a one half there. But now I actually have this. Here's my disc. Yeah, this is getting complicated. And then I have some rope up on top. So this is going to be the moment of inertia of the disc plus the moment of inertia of all that stuff, which is going to be uh, the length of that part, which is ugh. Let's see, so that's y. Oof. Wow. That's y. Then how much is Oh, I know the length of that. That's 2r. It's pi r. Pi r. So it's going to be uh, the length of that. So it's going to be pi r times land, but that's the mass. And then times r squared. Yeah. So the moment of inertia of, of something that's the same. The, think about the moment of inertia of a whole disk, a whole loop, right? It'd just be uh, m r squared. So it's the same thing, even though it doesn't go around. So there's the mass of the rope is lambda, pi r lambda, and then r squared. So I'm going to call m3 prime. It's going to be equal to uh, this is going to be, I'm going to factor out the r squared, and I'm going to say m3 over 2 plus pi r lambda. And I think that's going to work. That's going to go in there. I don't know. I'm just going to hope. Okay, so now if I put all my stuff in, I get a equals. I'm going to start on a new page. I know that's, see, that's how I know it's going to get bad, right? Okay, so I'm going to say, um, let's just write it out the long way. A equals negative m1 prime minus m2 prime g, all of that over m1 prime plus m2 prime plus m3 prime, I'll call it. Yeah. Now I need to start substituting stuff in, so I'm going to get negative. Uh, m1 prime is going to be m1 plus y lambda. Oops. Minus m2 prime, which is all this stuff. So I'm going to I'm going to bring the negative sign in. Minus m2 minus l lambda plus y lambda plus pi r lambda. And then on the bottom, I get uh, m1 prime, so it's going to be m1 plus y lambda, m2 prime plus m2 plus l lambda plus minus y lambda minus pi r lambda, and then this m3 stuff plus, <laughs> I know, I know, it's, it's crazy. Uh, so it's going to be plus m3 over 2 plus pi r lambda. Okay, so I get some stuff going on up here. I get, um, so I'm going to get m1, let's leave the negative m1 plus m2. I, I like to put it that way. And then I have a y lambda and I have 2y lambda plus 2y lambda. Then I have this other stuff. Mm, minus. 
minus L lambda plus pi R lambda. All of that over, now right here I get again M1 plus M2. Then here I have Y lambda and minus Y lambda, they cancel. Then I have uh, nothing else is going to cancel. Ooh, ooh, this cancels, look at that. Well, that's cool. Okay, so then I have plus L lambda, that canceled, plus M3 over two. Okay, I think that's good. So, um, do I have, oh yeah, so then if, if I let the linear density of the rope go to zero, if lambda goes to zero, that term's gone, that term's gone, that term's gone, that term's gone, and I get back to the original problem right here of a massless rope, so that's good. And then, and that solution's fine because that, uh, as M3 goes to zero for massless pull, I get back to the normal pulley thing. So I think this is pretty good. Um, now, what I would do next, and I'm not going to do it just because of time. Uh, I'm going, I would, you can't get, there's not a single value for the, the linear acceleration of a mass because it depends on y, right? So if you go back over here, as this thing moves down, as it accelerates down and moves down, y increases, which increases the acceleration. So it's a non-constant acceleration. Um, so what you would do is start, I did a numerical calculation. My other one is pretty much the same. We can just change these values. I'll leave them for your homework. And it's to say, first of all, calculate acceleration based on this. Number two, we have to start with initial conditions. And using this acceleration and assuming it's constant over a short time interval, which it's not, I can say V2 equals V1 plus A delta T. This is based just on the definition of average acceleration. Uh, and that's for a short time interval. Short. Then after that, I can say Y2 equals Y1. Uh, it's actually moving down, so I think it'd be negative v2 delta t. And here what I'm doing is, again, I'm assuming that's a constant velocity, which it's not, uh, but I used the velocity before that to calculate the new position. And then, of course, I can update time, t2 equals t1 plus delta t. And then I go back up and do the whole thing again. And I keep reiterating the short process to, to model the motion of that numerically instead of having to solve this differential equation, which isn't so easy. Um, and, and like I said, I did that in the previous problem. I'm going to go back and start adding all my things in there, but that's that's uh, that's the Atwood machine with a heavy rope and a heavy pulley. Uh, there is there are a few more problems, but I think I'm going to be. I think what I'd like to do now is do some other physics problems and then uh, do this experimentally. That'd be fun, huh? Would you like to do that? We'll do that. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later.